new season recently started and we are finally up to version 30 of the tier list. Now 24 pros from around the world helped put this together and I wanted to give a huge thank you to them for making this possible. We'll start with the worst brawlers and work our way up to the best. Starting off at the very bottom of the tier list is Edgar. Now Edgar actually did get a supercharged gear which is a very strong gear but he still has too many counters and he's still very easy to play around so it didn't help him very much. Mr. P is moving from the D tier down into the F tier. Mr. P isn't necessarily like like bad. I know we're putting him in the F tier. He's just he has no competitive play right now. Any situations that Mr. P might be a decent brawler, there's always a better option. And since this is a competitive tier list, he belongs at the bottom. And Shelly is staying in the F tier. She's almost as useless as Mr. P, but at the very least, she is a good counter against triple tank comps if that happens. But before you'd pick her, you'd probably want to pick Spike B or some other anti-tank brawlers. Jackie's moving from the D tier to the F tier. Jackie's range is pretty small and she struggles to get close to enemies, even with a couple of her different abilities. She does have some damage if she can pull them in with her super, but her super also doesn't have very good range, so generally she's pretty easy to stay away from. And Dynamike is staying in the F tier. He's also been at the bottom for the past few tier lists and hasn't received any changes recently. His shots are really difficult to land in competitive matches and gets outranged by pretty much every other thrower in the game. Up next is the D tier, but first I got a really cool sponsorship that I think you guys are gonna like. I've got a very special sponsorship because Brawl Stars actually gave PMI a license to create Brawl Stars toys that you could actually purchase. We got action figures and some awesome plushies. We even have all these little adorable collectibles like the Piper one. Oh, she's so cute. Now these are available at Target or Five Below, but you can actually order them on Amazon using the link below. Oh, and we got some news from Spike here. Oh, we've got a discount code to save you some money. Thanks, buddy. You can even buy a mega size box with 24 of them. It's like opening up a brawl box in real life, except you're actually guaranteed to get a brawler every time, like Mr. P. Now, if you buy one of the 24 packs, I don't know if you're guaranteed to get every single one of the figurines, but we're about to find out. Oh, we got Jesse, my favorite brawler. She's so cute. The legendary Leon. This is the luckiest I've been in Brawl Stars. Sandy. Oh my gosh, three legendaries in a row. We got Meg. Are you kidding me? This is insane. Four in a row. Amber. I don't know why it's making me feel so special that I'm getting legendaries here. Bo, be strong like the mountains. Piper, look at her. She's so adorable. Just look at her. This is another rare one. True Silver Jesse. Next is Colt. Tara. Awesome. Okay, BB. True Silver Frank. Okay, and True Gold Leon. Look at that. It's so sweet. Okay, and Rosa. And Penny. True Silver Shelly. And regular Shelly. <laughs> There's Frank. Okay, finally, we got Spike, and you can compare him to his action figure. Oh, and Nita. True Gold Spike. So shiny. And True Gold Crow. And the last one is obviously Crow. It's always the last brawler, right? The legendary that you're waiting on. There we go. As you can see, they look just like they do in game. They're awesome to collect or to give to others as gifts. So click that link below, use the discount code on the screen, and of course, a big thank you to PMI Toys for sponsoring this video. Byron is moving from the C tier down to the D tier. He got some major nerfs a few updates ago, and since then, he's been traveling lower and lower and lower on the tier list until, well, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't find himself in the F tier next time. His reload speed is just so slow, and whether he's healing teammates or dealing damage, he just never does quite enough. Bull is staying in the D tier. He's at least usable in heist because of his high DPS, but he's not good pretty much any other game mode because of how short his range is. His super does help him approach enemies, but at least invulnerable and makes him an easy target while he's using it. El Primo is also staying in the D tier. In fact, he's down here for a very similar reason to Bull. It's just that his super is a slightly better than Bull's because, you know, he's not so vulnerable while he's using it. Jesse's moving from the C tier down into the D tier. She doesn't have a lot of use in competitive play because there are just better options than her. However, there are a few particular maps that Jesse does very well, so that's why she's not in the F tier. Colt is staying in the D tier. He doesn't have any balance changes, but he did receive the reload gear, which has helped him a little bit, but still there are better options than him, especially when you consider the fact that the reload gear did get a nerf. Oh, please don't hate me. This The pros have spoken. Mortis has moved from the C tier down into the D tier. Mortis hasn't had any stat changes recently either, but his tier placement has a lot more to do with the other brawlers that and how they actually land on the tier list. Right now, Mortis's biggest counters are really high up in the meta, so he's usually not a good choice, even in Brawl Ball, guys. Up next are the C tier brawlers. Frank is moving from the B tier down into the C tier. Now, Frank is not totally useless because he has so much HP that it's actually, it actually takes a lot to take him out. However, it is very easy to pick on him and a lot of brawlers absolutely do that. Nani is staying in the C tier. Her attacks are really hard to hit on close range maps with lots of walls. So she's only really useful on 
on certain maps in certain modes. Ever since the Shield Gear release, it's also been a lot harder for her to one-shot brawlers with her super. BB's moving from the B tier down to the C tier. Yes, her reload speed is pretty fast and she deals a fair amount of damage with each attack, but she still has a really short range and she has no abilities that quickly bring her close to enemies, at least not like a like a jump or something like that. And in a long range meta like the game is right now, uh, she struggles. Buzz is moving from the B tier down into the C tier. Buzz does have an ability that allows him to approach enemies, but it's still pretty easy to counter with abilities that can stun him or knock him back. And although he can be pretty good in lower trophy areas on certain maps and stuff like that, competitively, he does tend to struggle. Rosa is staying in the C tier. She has really high health and DPS, and so she's able to take out pretty much any brawler that she can get within range of her. But like I said, this meta is pretty long range, and also there's a lot of heavy hitting damage dealers that can take her out pretty quickly. 8-Bit is staying in the C tier. Even though 8-Bit's slow movement speed is tough to play with, his range and DPS do make up for it, at least somewhat. Unfortunately for 8-Bit, some of the brawlers that do counter him have moved up in this meta. Daryl's moving from the B tier down into the C tier. Daryl can easily get knocked back or stun after using a super, but... And he does have one thing going for him, and that's the fact that his super is a lot more consistent than other assassins because it does automatically recharge. Meg is moving from the B tier down into the C tier. She recently received a small buff, but apparently the pros say that she's still not very good. Who knows? We're still fairly early into the season, so maybe after a little bit of time, the pros will say, you know, she might be a little bit better than C tier, but for now, this is where we're putting her. Grom is staying in the C tier. His attacks are very easy to dodge without the help of Walls or his teammates. Now, Grom's X Factor star power does make his attacks pretty strong, so he can be a decent choice if he's if you can actually keep enemies from getting too close away from him. But his attacks are really easy to dodge. So without walls or help from his teammates, he's usually not that good. But now we're moving into the B tier with brawlers that are somewhat competitive. Maybe not in every situation, but sometimes. Sam is moving from the S tier down to the bottom of the B tier. He got a pretty big nerf to his star power, and that ability was the one thing that was keeping him at the top of the meta. Now that it's been toned down, he plays a lot more like the average close range brawler, and B tier seems to be suiting him well for now. Barley's moving from the C tier up into the B tier. He recently received a buff to his attack damage, but it only seems to be helping him just a little bit. He's all about area control and his range didn't get buffed, so he's really only good on the same maps that he was before. He's just a little bit better now. Lou is also moving from the C tier up into the B tier. Lou does have some pretty good abilities, but they all depend on how well he can actually land his attack. He has one of the toughest attacks that can be used in the game, and it can be really powerful, but it's a little inconsistent and difficult to get people frozen all the time. Terra's moving from the C tier up into the B tier. Her super is really the only thing she has going for her. Admittedly, though, it can turn games around, but in a highly competitive, skilled game, it's hard to land a good super, but sometimes on the right map or mode or to counter specific brawlers, she can be good, which is why she's in the B tier. Nita is staying in the B tier. She got some good buffs a couple updates ago, and she hasn't really moved since then. She gets her bear a lot more often now, so she's a good counter against brawlers that struggle to take out her bear, but there are better options if the enemy does have a way to get rid of her bear. Rico is also staying in the B tier. He hasn't gone through any major changes in the, quite a while, and B tier seems to be where he's kind of sitting. He's a really good brawler for certain maps, and on those maps, he's insane, but otherwise, you don't play him, which is kind of the perfect description for the B tier. Tick is staying in the B tier as well. He's one of the only two brawlers in the game with a mythic gear, and while it's not a bad gear, it just doesn't make a big difference at the competitive level. That being said, his crazy amount of area control always makes him at least B tier because it's really annoying to just like, he's, he throws so many mines. Sprout is also staying in the B tier. Sprout isn't as consistent as Tick is when it comes to throwers, but on maps where Sprout really is good on, it absolutely ruins enemy strategies and is oftentimes completely untouchable for most of the match. Pam's also staying in the B tier. She doesn't really have any overwhelming abilities, but everything about her is at least decent. In fact, she's a really great brawler to max out if you're wanting to pick that one brawler because she's generally good everywhere. She doesn't really have any hard counters, but she also doesn't really counter anybody else, which is why she's good for B tier. Sandy is staying in the B tier. Not much has changed for Sandy recently. His super is still very good, but there are other brawlers like Griffer Poco that have wider attacks that are a little bit easier to hit enemies than Sandy's is. And Sandy's range is fairly short, so B tier seems to work well for him. Squeak's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Honestly, I think that in lower trophy areas, Squeak is still very strong. But in the competitive matches, his attacks are really easy to dodge in 1v1s, and their damage just is not enough to make him a top tier brawler anymore. Eve is moving from the C tier up into the B tier. She got a good size buff to her attack damage, and it moved her up a whole tier. She's still a little fragile, but she does have great range, she deals a fair amount of damage, and her gadget is amazing at getting her out of sketchy situations. Fang's 
moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Fang has everything that a good tank slash assassin really needs, plus a fair enough attack range that will actually charge up his super against long range brawlers. However, players are getting better and better at playing around Fang and making sure that they are close to enough to each other that they can take him out if he does happen to super onto their side of the field. Ash is staying in the B tier. He's very slightly better after the update, mostly because he was one of the brawlers that received the supercharged gadget, and he actually uses it pretty quite well. A fully raged Ash is always a top tier brawler, and more supers means more rage, which, as it turns out, has actually made him pretty solid. Bo is staying in the B tier. He really rose high into the meta a couple of updates ago, and it was kind of out of nowhere, so a lot of players had to figure out how to play against him. Most players can dodge his attacks and avoid his mines a lot more conveniently now that he's being played all the time, and they have a little bit more practice. Lola is staying in the B tier. Now, she did receive a reload gear, and this update has made her a little bit better, but the real gear did get a nerf, so it's like, you know, it's still probably one of her better options, but it's just not quite as strong as it used to be. She's still really good for how much area control she has with her attack and her super and how much damage she can just, she can just shred through stuff. Ems is staying in the B tier, and this is pretty much exactly where she was in the last tier list. She's a great counter to tanks, she's a decent brawler against most other brawlers, but she also does get countered, and you typically don't want to play her in the right situation. Leon is staying in the B tier. He isn't as good as he used to be for a lot of the same reasons that Sandy isn't. The vision gear, as well as brawlers with wide attacks, make Leon super just pretty easy to play against, and invisibility just isn't quite as good as he used to be. But now we are moving on to the A tier brawlers. These brawlers are competitive, and you can play them most places. However, there are still better options in the S tier. And starting us off, we have Brock, who's moving from the C tier up to the bottom of the A tier. Brock has always had good range and DPS, but his projectiles were just too slow for him to be a top tier brawler. With the new reload gadget, he's able to fire more rockets one after another, and it's made a big difference for him, even after the reload gear got nerfed. Carl is moving from the very bottom of the S tier down into the A tier. He's still strong at long range and at close range. He hardly has any counters. He's just overall generally good. However, there are some options that are just slightly better and just barely squeals him into the A tier. Surge is staying in the A tier. He's a great counter to tanks, and as soon as he has passed his first two upgrades, he can hold his own against pretty much any other brawler in the game. Playing him really does depend on how well you can keep him alive, but if he's alive and powers all the way up, he's really hard to beat. Crow is staying in the A tier. He's a very good counter against tanks and healers, and even if there aren't tanks or healers on the enemy team, his slowing toxin makes him a very solid choice in pretty much any situation. Amber is staying in the A tier. Now, she received the reload gear in this update, and she benefits from it so much. In fact, possibly more than any other brawler that got it. With increased reload speed, her constant area control is just insane and she can deal so much damage. She might have been an S tier brawler and some of the pros did suggest it. However, there were quite a few that suggested that she just stay exactly where she's at. So we kept her there for now. Colonel Ruffs is staying in the A tier. As long as his super can increase the stats of his teammates and himself as much as they do now, he will never be a bad brawler. Or it's very unlikely to be at least. Even without the help from his teammates, Ruffs is strong enough to hold his own against most brawlers in a 1v1 fight. Bell is also staying in the A tier. She has as much range as pretty much any other sharpshooter in the game and her projectiles are fairly fast and relatively easy to hit, at least even at medium range. Her shots aren't strong enough to take down tanks easily, but she can change that with her super, which makes her a decent tank counter. Piper's moving from the B tier up into the A tier. She's just one of the best long range brawlers in the game, not only because of how much range she has, because, but also she deals a lot of damage from that range. She also has more than one ability that keeps enemies away from her, so she's always pretty tough to take out. And in the long range meta, she's a little bit better than she was in the last tier list. Colette is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Colette's a very strong counter against tanks, and she has a decent enough range and DPS to do well on most maps and game modes. Her super is easy to use. She can pretty much kill anybody with a quick two hits and a super. And even though I don't like playing her, the pros are saying she's pretty great. Next is Spike, who is staying in the A tier. Spike is pretty fragile, but other than some throwers, he doesn't really have any weaknesses because he does so much damage from the long range and even more damage from close range. Gene is staying in the A tier. He's the second brawler to receive his own mythic gear, and the addition of this super range is actually, well, Okay. It's good. It just hasn't made as much of a difference as we thought that it would. That doesn't mean that it's still not a great ability, and you definitely want to play it with him, but he's not as strong as I thought he was going to be with this gear. Next is Gale, who is staying in the A tier. Between his wide main attack and his super and his twister gadget, Gale is probably one of the best counters to tanks in the game. Not only that, he has a decent range, so he's pretty much always useful no matter what. Penny is staying in the A tier. Penny's rework made her one of the best brawlers in the game, and since then, she's been nerfed a little bit. However, her abilities are still very versatile, and she 
she's still an A tier brawler despite her nerfs. Gus is moving from the C tier all the way up into the A tier. Gus had a bit of a rework, got a bunch of buffs, and that was exactly what he needed for competitive players to max him out and start using him. He got significantly better when his second star power was released, and now he's a top tier brawler. Some pros even suggested putting him in the top three. Stu is staying in the A tier. He's usually an S tier brawler, but the current meta is full of brawlers with wide attacks, which means that they can still hit him even if he uses his super to try and dodge them. And at the very top of the A tier, we're going to place Buster here. Now, I wanted to add a huge, big, fat disclaimer that at the time of me getting feedback from pros, Buster had not yet been released. So this is very much speculation based off of my own experience with him. He's not very good in solo situations where he can't actually charge his super off of his teammates. But when his teammates are there and in 3v3 modes, he's actually really good. There's actually a chance that he could be an S tier brawler, maybe even one of the best in the game at the moment. But I didn't want to place him in the S tier without the pro's confidence, so yeah, that, he's going to stay here for now. Up um, next are the S tier brawlers. Poco's recent damage buff put an end to him being in the top three, but it didn't move him out of the S tier. He's still very easy to use. He deals plenty of damage and he provides just so much healing for his whole team. He's incredibly versatile. In fact, like he's really good at the moment. B is also staying in the S tier. Because there are brawlers in the top tier that can deal a lot of healing, like Poco or Griff, right? B is still an S tier brawler, absolutely. Very few brawlers outrange her and her super is great against tanks and medium range brawlers. Plus her supercharged shot will take out a ton of HP, no matter how much you have. Bon Bonnie is staying in the S tier. Her projectile speed is very fast, so her attacks are easy to land, even though she's kind of like a sharpshooter and like a slow movement speed in her cannon form, right? Her super also basically makes her an assassin, so she can be used in pretty much any map or situation in the game. Max is also staying in the S tier. She's got very good DPS, a very fast movement speed. She outranges a lot of brawlers, at least when she's able to be moving so fast. And again, for those that do outrange her, her super allows her to just dodge between shots and stuff like that for her whole team. She provides a lot of value and I don't see her very much in non-competitive play, but man, she is so good. Janet is also staying in the S tier. She has been one of the best brawlers in the game for a while now. Her stats have been nerfed here or there, but her abilities just make her just ridiculously strong. Without changes to her mechanics, she'll probably stay at the very top of the meta unless she gets like a, a fair nerf to her reload speed or her attack damage. Next is Otis, who was in the D tier and is moving all the way up into the S tier. Otis started out as one of the worst brawlers in the game, and then his super started dealing damage to enemies and that made him instantly so much better when they gave him that change. In the last update, he received a super charge gear and apparently it has made a bigger difference for him than I thought it would because he is in the top three now. But claiming that number one position is Griff, two tier lists in a row. The only thing that changed about Griff since the last update was that he got a reload gear. So it makes sense that he is at the top of this meta as well. Brawlers that outrange his main attack can sort of deal with him, but his super is pretty much unavoidable and deals so much damage. Plus he's throwing out more attacks and more than ever thanks that reload gear and he's just incredibly strong definitely the king of the meta and there you have all 61 brawlers ranked from worst to best please remember though to if you do post this anywhere to include my face <laughs> okay, and also the pro tier list collaborators that helped put this together. This was not my tier list. This was heavily inspired by a bunch of feedback that the pros gave me. Also, remember this is strictly a competitive 3v3 game modes. If you are more interested in playing solo showdown, I made a tier list for solo and duo showdown right here that you can check out. Also, make sure you subscribe for future content. There's another video as well. And for now, this is Kairos time ticking by. We will see you in Brawl Stars.